Welcome to West Coast Focus, sponsored by Myrick Photographic right here in Monterey. I'm your host, Steve Zamack, and today's show is all about the Weston Scholarship, its founders, supporters, instructors, winners, and the growing impact it's having on young photographers and how photography is being taught in our high schools and colleges. Has black and white film and wet darkroom photography been lost in the wake of the 21st century digital age? Is what was called straight photography 60 years ago, now referred to as analog, only being practiced by old school photographers from that era? There was some local concern that West Coast photography history was being lost and forgotten along with the techniques on which it was founded. <clears throat> that was much of the impetus for creating this show and photography's first family responded in their own way. Mentorship, education, and imparting the craft to newer photographers has always had deep roots in the West Coast School of Photography. The photographers we have on our panel today are living proof that traditional black and white photography is alive and well and has a bright future. Although she's been carrying a camera on her since elementary school, our first guest just completed her first two classes of photography at Monterey Peninsula College with Greg Mettler earlier this year, which resulted in a second place award in social commentary in the 2016 Weston Scholarship Awards. She draws inspiration from 19th century portrait photographers Alexander Gardner, Lady Clementina Howarden, Julia Margaret Cameron, and Gertrude Kazebear. Conceptually, she goes beyond portraiture to recreate scenes and iconic imagery from times past and enjoys telling stories through a series of images. In many instances, she is both model and photographer, and you'll see her on the homepage banner of the westoncollective.org receiving her award. Building her own large format camera and exploring 19th century printing techniques is on her to-do list. It's great to have Lane Olson on the show today. Welcome, Lane. Oh, thank you. Our next panelist shot his first roll of film when he was about six years old on his grandfather's farm. And a camera would accompany him throughout his school years. Martha Cassinave, Kevin Bransfield, and Greg Mettler were his instructors at Monterey Peninsula College. He's influenced by the work of Gregory Colbert, Michael Kenna, Roman Lawrence, and Jerry Olsman, so of course he pursues black and white landscape imagery. He's a two-time recipient of Weston Scholarships and a second with a second place award in fine art in 2012, crowned by a first place award in 2016. We have Eduardo Sandoval on the show with us today. Welcome, Eduardo. Thank you so much. The next artist on our panel hit the streets of Eugene, Oregon when he was 18 years old with a Vivitar 35 uh, millimeter camera and 50 millimeter lens. Influenced by 20th century American photographers, Robert Frank, Gary Winogrand, and Brett Weston. He's a freelance photographer who also calls Kevin Bransfield and Greg Mettler at MPC his teachers. Most notably, he was honored with the Weston Scholarship Distinguished John Crossman Award in 2016, as well as an honorable mention in 2014. He's already pursuing a career in photography and is looking at art schools or journalism for the U.S. Army in the near future. It's good to have Edwin Franco on the show today. Good to meet you, Edwin. Thank you. Likewise. Before we engage these local photographers in a discussion about their experience in the Weston Scholarship, I want to show you a brief interview I did with program founders Gina and Kim Weston. Kim is the son of Cole Weston and grandson of Edward Weston. Gina is his wife and creative director of the Weston Collective. They live and work at the historic Wildcat Hill home studio of four generations of Weston photographers going back to 1938. You're also going to see some photography from the winners, so sit back, enjoy this inspirational tale straight from the living room where Edward Weston shot many of his famous nudes. And it was sort of a, an idea that digital was coming in and some of the dark rooms at our local colleges, high schools, uh, analog dark rooms were disappearing. And Gina and I thought, you know, this is such a rich area with not only my grandfather, but Ed, um, Ansel Adams. Uh, I mean, you, you could go down the list of, of black and white photographers that lived here. And to have that go away from our schools was, to us, something that we really didn't want to happen. So we started this contest of sort of inspiring the kids and the teachers to uh, continue black and white uh, tradition in photography in the schools. 
Oh. Yeah, I, I really think that was a big part for me, that I really wanted it. I wanted the kids to know who Edward Weston was. That was, that was big for me. Um, we live, you know, we live in his house. You know, it, it's such a huge, it's, it's a big thing in the photography world. And I knew that a lot of the kids didn't know about him. So in the past 13 years, all, now all the kids know about him. They all come down for visits. They're all striving to become better. You know, the portfolios have become better than they were. And we are working closely with the teachers. And so the teachers' skills have changed because they're teaching them to create a whole portfolio of work rather than a piece here, a piece there, you know, project here, a project there. And um, without the teachers, you know, it wouldn't really work. So we've been really lucky to work closely with the teachers in our on our peninsula. Oh. The reason that <laughs> the reason why we really started the scholarship program is because I went to MPC. I took a class with Don Anderson, and I realized that not all the kids had dark rooms. I realized they didn't have a lot of paper. They didn't have a lot of money to buy supplies. And with the help of Don Anderson, that's when the aha moment came. Like, oh my gosh. Let's do a scholarship portfolio contest, give awards in cash to these kids. We've distributed $94,000, and we've given 275 awards. It's been the last 13 years. And to us, the idea of getting rid of the analog process would, would be like taking a step out of history, because it's so important uh, as an artist form to be able to start with really cohesive positive steps to you know we don't care if they go on to digital or whatever then digital is just a tool um, so to have the, the the students get that foundation I mean get that sort of knowledge uh, of what they're dealing with, you know, and the, the preciseness of, of, of the business and, and, and the technology. It's a craft. Photography is a craft. It's like any other thing. Um, but you have to know that craft to be able to create. I mean, you can't just pick up a violin and all of a sudden, or a guitar, and you're a musician. It's practice. It's practice and it's diligence and it's time spent. Yeah. But for them to put together five cohesive images, you know, printed, you know, first photographed, developed, printed, and mounted and presented is something they will take with them the rest of their lives. You know, they will become bankers, lawyers, or whatever, but they will always have that achievement. And to us, that was the important thing. It was more than just photography. It was more, you know, it was the experience of, of, of learning about they, their existence and, and their life moving forward. And, um, and it's so rewarding. I mean, Gina knows. And to watch these, these students see their work on the wall for the first time you know, and have their peers see it for the first time. You know, it would be like composing your first piece of music and having your friends listen to it. You know, it's a very vulnerable time in, in, in your life. And that is just, for us, beyond the photography and all that, that's a step of progression and growth in, in a young person's life. Um, you know, I'm not kidding myself to think I'm, converting or we're converting these kids and uh, students into into photographers no way I mean it's much more than that I always said that that the scholarship was Kim's <laughs> baby Kim Steele and Kim was my inspiration and I did it because he loved it so much and as the years have gone by I've realized that I have a passion for these kids. Without her, I mean, seriously, without her, without her, her passion for the scholarship and, and not only that, just our lives, um, I would be, you know, I would be lost.
back to West Coast Focus and our discussion about the scholarship program. Uh, you can get all the details about the Weston Scholarship, their family history, and how to get involved at the westoncollective.org. And of course, the program uh, would not be possible without the generous support of uh, our great photography community here. So if you're not already involved, get involved. Okay, let's kick off the discussion. First question, what is it about black and white gelatin silver prints that is so appealing? Go ahead, Lane, what do you think? Um, well, for me, you know, I feel like we're living in this world that's kind of just about instant gratification and you know taking photos mostly with our iPhones and things like that and it's just such a nice way I think to just slow down your life a little bit you know go through the process of taking the photos and then um, developing the film and printing it yourself and you know you're just so involved in it and um, it just really becomes um, you, you become a part of the work that you're creating I think and um, yeah, it's just, it kind of makes you that much more proud of the end result, I mm -hmm. think, in the end. More handmade, more crafted, mm -hmm. more time invested in it. Yeah. yeah. Eduardo, yeah. what do you think? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I guess, yeah, like as she said, I mean, this time that we have our iPhones and we can just grab them, take a picture of whatever we see, uh, going into the dark room, going, doing all this process to get you images, just so uh it's it's so 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 gratifying you you get that feeling that you're creating the cr feeling of creating something on your own it's like like a painter doing a uh, his doing his painting a sculpture uh, and it's just it's not as it's not just as easy as uh focus and click yeah post and you're done <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and yeah, something that you actually put in your hands Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, flip through like a portfolio mm -hmm. and instead of going through a screen and it's, it gives texture and, and the contrast and everything on it. Yeah, it's something substantial. You can hold it in your hands. You can hold it big in your hands. Mm -hmm. It's not like on a little display mm -hmm. you're zooming in and roaming yeah. around on. You actually um, feel it. Yeah and, yeah, and the choice of paper plays a lot into mm -hmm. that, that yeah. tactile feeling of the print as well. I want to read you a quote um, from Kevin Bransfield, uh, your instructor from Monterey Peninsula College, about the scholarship program, and then get your thoughts on uh, what the educational program at MPC um, was all about for you. The Weston Scholarship is a godsend for a uh, photography instructor in Monterey County. My students are always very excited about entering the scholarship. That excitement translates into enthusiasm in producing a portfolio of very high quality and thoughtful prints in the darkroom. During the last award ceremony, one of my students told me that this was the first time that she and their family had been in a museum and it was to see their own artwork hanging on the wall. So, and, and you all have, are you, were you, you're all 16 winners. Were you all part of the um, mm -hmm. Monterey Museum exhibit yeah. there? Mm -hmm. What a turn on is that for you guys? <laughs> I mean, the photographers that are in that collection that are on permanent exhibit there and you guys get to have your work right up there with it. And you know, you're, you become a piece of the photographic history of this area. Yeah. What do you think about that? And how was, what um, was your education like at MPC? Uh, the education was amazing. Um, Kevin, Greg, Celia, Great teachers on photography um, showed me the ropes. Definitely showed me um, a lot that I can do with uh, as a career and as um, an artist to grow. And but yeah, I learned a lot from them, and they're just amazing uh, photographers as well mm -hmm. too. And um, and with the museum, it's just, it was uh, breathtaking. It was amazing. Uh, it was an honor to even be a part of this. And how many classes did you take at MPC? Um, I took about three. Mm -hmm. Three mm -hmm. classes. So Excellent. It was, yeah, it's very nice. Eduardo? Yeah, it's been quite amazing uh, being there and seeing my own work in the museum. Uh, I think also i like to add with the uh, experience at MPC, it's been amazing uh, with the teachers, Martha, Kevin, uh, Greg, uh, also uh, the uh, people that we have met throughout mm -hmm. these years. Uh, it has been amazing. Mm -hmm. Lane, do your peers in the classes, the, the other students there, um, are they a big part of the educational process at MPC? Yeah, it's just, um, it's just great to be in such an artistic community. Um, everyone is just doing such different types of work, 
and um, it's just great to be able to all see you know what everyone's doing what people are bringing out of the dark room and it's just always exciting mm -hmm. okay cool well now it's time to see some of this great photography we've been talking about we have slideshows of Lane's work and Eduardo's work set to the guitar stylings of Pacific Grove's own Bill Specht stick around we'll see you back here in about three minutes enjoy <laughs> Welcome back to West Coast Focus. I hope you enjoyed that photography, although I introduced it incorrectly. Those were Edwin's photos we saw in the second slideshow. We'll be seeing Eduardo's photos a little bit further on in the program. Let's get back to our discussion of the Weston Scholarship Program. Uh, Lane, you dabble in narrative photography. Um, were you uh, put together a whole series of images to deliberately tell a story? What's driving that artistic vision and what other ideas are you working on? Um, well, my first narrative that I worked on actually started um, as a class assignment in Greg Mettler's class, and I just loved the idea of, you know, almost getting to put together these film stills. I always loved, you know, old films and film noir and stuff like that, so um, that's kind of what I was going for as far as that. Um, uh, I'm planning on probably doing another narrative soon. Um, I've been very inspired by like Civil War photography mm -hmm. and imagery and um, I'd love to do some 
different scenes, maybe from Civil War era sort of stuff, you mm -hmm. know, kind of play with some more old school, you know, looking. Will, will you be attending like the uh, any Civil War reenactments to recruit your model and get your sets? <laughs> That's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. I'm, <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna have to go around and find some scruffy men, I guess, and <laughs> start getting some wardrobes um, for that. But there's yeah. probably an interest group in this area. You know, they, yeah. they probably travel to the battlefields when the time comes. <laughs> but there's probably people in this area that have the costumes and everything yeah. ready. I well, love to do that. Anyone's watching and they're interested in being a part of that, definitely email me and let me know. <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> right. Good. Okay, Edwin. We saw a lot of work. You do very, uh, very close-up work. Mm -hmm on your models, but also lots of other types of photography. What's your favorite type of photography? What are you pursu pursuing right now, and what ideas do you have for projects in the future? Uh, I think my favorite uh, type of photography is documenting the streets. Mm -hmm. um, the people watching and just being out there, it's just very um, exciting. There's a lot of power out there, and I kind of came from watching street photographers and stuff like that, but I want to have all trades of photography under my belt for like landscapes, uh, portraits, um, documenting, journalism. So that's kind of where I'm at right there, mm -hmm. right now. I'm uh, basically I freestyle my photos. So what, if I'm feeling landscape, I'm going to go for landscape. If I want to do some portraits, I'm going to go do some portraits. But in a, or if I want to just go to the streets and document, I'll, I'll I'll go to the streets. Just whatever inspires you that day, that moment. Yep, I just let it flow and not force it. I'm the same way, but sort of more between whether I'm going to be shooting black and white mm -hmm. or color that day. Yeah. And I usually go out with the intention to shoot black and white because <laughs> I enjoy it more. But sometimes the color just speaks. And you yeah. got to, you can't, you, you just got to go with the flow of that direction mm -hmm. and let it, uh, let, let your own artistic vision just go with it unhindered rather than trying to steer it in a part particular way, which might f you know, force results mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, Eduardo, now w you do a lot of time exposure, landscapes, water. Yeah. I love that kind of work. <laughs> I like to do that kind of work myself. Um, what, is it, what is it about how you're portraying the natural world um, in a sur surreal way through time exposure? Uh, why do you like to portray the world that way? Why do you see it that way? I use, it is so, uh, the uh, area or this place is really amazing and you see it's this dramatic uh, place uh, this, uh, and I always, always go out there and I just feel calm, I just feel, I, f I feel this peace inside me even though, uh, even though all this, uh, the wind is coming in, the waves are crashing, I just feel calm and I, that's, that's what I feel. Uh, Trained, uh, I'm doing with my photography, mm -hmm. you know? and that so that the silky serenity of the water is yeah. conveying your feelings of how you feel being in that landscape. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. I got a lot of inspiration from uh, uh, Michael Kinney. Mm -hmm. uh, I love, I really love his work, and uh, like, and I'm really amazed how some of his photographs they'll take even eight hours all night just to make those photographs so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i started doing a little bit of that not mm -hmm. that long yet but getting there what's the longest exposure you've done like an hour and 30 minutes mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i think that's been the longest okay. right now very nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things I like about portraying the world that way is because you're documenting the real world, but you're showing it in a way that is not perceivable by the human eye, but it's yeah. still how the world really is. And I kind of have like a, a sci-fi thing about it, mm -hmm. too, and I like that kind of sci-fi surreal imagery. Let's talk a little bit about uh, photography and social media and how you guys are getting your photography out there. Lane, what's your favorite social media site and how are you using it? Um, you know what, I haven't d gotten my photography out there too much yet through social media. Um, I feel like I'm definitely still like in the very beginning learning stages with my photography. Last um, spring semester was my first couple classes. Um, 
But, you know, I am definitely open to kind of putting myself out there a little bit more, maybe through Facebook or mm -hmm. Instagram or something like that. Mm -hmm. but yeah, now since you have these, um, you know, wet darkroom prints, you have to go to the extra step of scanning them, mm -hmm. doing yeah. a little digital touch-up, which now you have all the preparation you did for this show. Mm -hmm. You've got lots of digital yeah. files now oh, you yeah. can start uh, uploading. Eduardo, how about you? What social media sites are your favorite to use? Uh, I think I'm on the same page that Lay uh, and is the first first photograph. So uh, I'm doing mostly uh, Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook. Uh, also, the uh, westerns have helped me a lot of a lot with that. And uh, pretty soon I'll be uh, getting my own uh, website. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. I al already is getting ready. So in a few days should be out there. Yeah, filling it with all the photos. Yeah. That takes some time, <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> takes uh, time choosing uh, the design and yeah, it's it's quite a, a little bit of work I and mean, like something that you didn't expect to ha to have to do mm -hmm. uh, in this uh, with uh, getting involved with photography, but that's we get in there. It's amazing for photographers how much writing we have to do and how many other <laughs> yeah, like, communication yeah. <laughs> devices we have to use in addition to our photography when really photography is all we really want to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, we want to uh, show images and not not the writing. Uh, if we wanted to do uh, some writing, we we would uh, we would be doing some like English May or something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, not. Yeah, but it's still. Not the visual arts. Yeah, Eddie, how about you? Uh, de definitely the Weston Scholarship um, website helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. I use that, um, or they use me. It's that. But um, 500px, I, I use that. There's a lot of good photography on there. I mm -hmm. think that's a solid base right now. Um, Facebook as well, but mostly 500px mm -hmm. for right now. So that's probably where I'm at. Very good. Um, I'm using Facebook mostly. Mm -hmm. I use it as a um, a photo blog. I thought mm -hmm. about adding a blog component to my website. But Facebook already has all that programming mm -hmm. already done. Why reinvent the wheel? Mm -hmm. And uh, I find it's a great way to interact with a, with a fan base. Mm -hmm. Ask them questions. You know, do you like this photo better in color in black and white? Mm -hmm. um, do you like the cropped version, uncropped version? And you get a lot of feedback from people. And you just get to constantly be interacting with people about your photography. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of groups on um, the Facebook too, like photo groups that I kind of like and. You know, and like you said, you can ask someone, "Hey, what what about this composition, or how how does this look?" Or, and it it, do, it definitely does help mm -hmm. and to get it out there as well. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, just to get it shown, because you might not always have an exhibit going on at a mm -hmm. gallery or something that mm -hmm. you can direct people to, and that's a physical location yeah. where you know internet, no boundaries, anywhere yep. in the world can be following your work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're about halfway into our show, and now I want to show you a brief interview I did with Stephen Myrick, uh, our show's sponsor. Myrick Photographic is an important part of the West Coast photographic history in this area. They have served such photographers as Ansel Adams, Cole Weston, Wynn Bullock, Morley Bear, and John Sexton, and many, many more. Uh, so stay tuned. Enjoy hearing Steve's stories of these great photographers of the past. We'll see you back here in a couple minutes. Hey, I'm here at Myrick Photographic in Monterey, and uh, Steve, how long have you been in business in Monterey as a camera store? Actually began the business in 1979, working out of my home, and then in uh, 82 we opened our retail store next to the Yellowstero Car Wash in Monterey, mm -hmm. and then on April 1st, 2014, we moved into our newest location here on 10th Street next to Vapor Cleaners. Uh, we've been very privileged and honored to have everyone from Morley Bear, who is a wonderful uh, customer of ours, became a wonderful friend. Uh, Cole Weston used to walk through the doors and just light the place up. Kim Weston was uh, uh, always been a friend and, and has helped us actually years ago when we were doing a remodel project back mm -hmm. when he was uh, still working in uh, carpentry. Mm -hmm. uh, times that we really remember, like when Ansel used to come over when they were getting the car washed and lean over the old Dutch doors of the first store we had back in the uh, early 1980s. Mm -hmm. so a lot of fun, mm -hmm. a lot of good memories. Uh, speaking of the Westons, you know, um, you're sponsoring uh, this episode, which is about the Weston Scholarship Program. 
and uh, I know a lot of the applicants and their winners come from Monterey Peninsula College, which is just about right across the street from you when you're at that El Estero location, just a block down the street, and I bet they show up for their first day of class with Greg Mettler and leave class and come right over here to get everything they need. Yes, it's been very convenient for MPC, uh, for the instructors as well as the students, mm -hmm. and of course it's been uh, wonderful for us because we've been able to help students out uh, <laughs> when they were desperate for supplies. Mm -hmm. Yes, we still stock uh, photographic paper for the students primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, we have chemistry here as well. Uh, we people come in and occasionally remark the fact that we actually have film in stock. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's always uh, humorous to me because it's always been film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're focusing primarily uh, on the used equipment. We have uh, that's where I got started actually with uh, Shutterbug ads back in 1979 selling used equipment all over the, the world, and uh, we've continued to do that. We've sort of come full circle that now where that's our primary focus on hardware is with used equipment. What kind of printing services do you offer here in the store? We offer online photo finishing uh, from digital files. We also still print from film. So we're capable of printing from film and digital on our AGFA uh, digital lab up to uh, 12 inch by 18 inch, and this is the true wet lab process. And then we also have a 44-inch Canon printer where we can print uh, anything up to 44 inches by whatever you've got. We've, we've done them up to 100 inches in length. That's great. So there you have it, straight from the mouth, owner-manager Stephen Myrick. He's been here for decades, <laughs> serving photographers all the way back to Ansel Adams. Make him your next stop for all your photographic needs. This is a sign that came off of uh, uh, Win Bullock's concession, photo concession at Fort Ord many years ago. And the Bullock family was kind enough to uh, allow us to enjoy this uh, as part of our photo collection and uh, local memorabilia. Uh, Win Bullock had a photo concession for many years out there. And uh, whenever students uh, complain about having to do commercial work, I have to remind them that. There were a lot of photographers that did commercial work. Not all of them went straight to being artists. Welcome back to West Coast Focus and our discussion about the Weston Scholarship winners. This show would not be possible without the generous support uh, like sponsors, uh, Myrick Photo, as well as the additional financial support of Terry Lebda Administrative Services in Marina. We've got lots of great programming coming up to finish the year and into 2017, and we need your support. So please contact, it, contact me and get all the details about sponsoring an episode at stevesmac.com. So with uh, Myrick Photo, being just a couple blocks from Monterey Peninsula College, I'm sure you've all been in there for a product or service no, of yeah, some yeah. sort to help your photography. Uh, Eddie, how has uh, Myrick Photo helped you out with your photography? Uh, definitely helped me out with uh, developing my film sometimes on a rush and when I don't have a class or something. I shoot a lot of, or I photograph a lot of colored film that uh, slides and so they process all that for me. Mm -hmm. Paper when I'm in a jam and I run out of paper from doing test strips and I just <laughs> ride my bike right up there and they supply me. So they're amazing for still being here and um, keeping it going. Perfect. Eduardo? Yeah, it's, especially when you're in a rush and you need something really fast, you can just go there and get paper, developer, uh, fixer. So it's, it's, um, it's awesome that they're still here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lane? Yeah, we are just very lucky to have them <laughs> right around the corner. Um, I've gotten my film there and different camera accessories. And another great thing is all the employees there are just so knowledgeable mm -hmm. about all things photography and cameras. You know, I feel like every time I go in, I always go out knowing something more. They always have tips and mm -hmm. advice. So they're very, very helpful store. I've used them for so many things. Uh, film processing, mm -hmm. I've bought used lenses there, I've bought my uh, memory cards there, batteries there, 
digital paper there. I've done printing there at those self-serve kiosks, but just a great asset to the community, and uh, I hope they're around a long time. Yeah. Eduardo, yeah. let's talk about one of your photos that was uh, very popular in the Weston Scholarship, <laughs> and that's of a, it's a feather floating inside of a, a flame. Is that yeah. a single shot, or is that a darkroom composite, you know, influenced by Jerry Ulsman? It was a uh, da uh, darkroom composite influenced by uh, Osman. Uh, I went to uh, see his uh, show at the uh, CPA, mm -hmm. and I was just like perplexed by how amazing his work was, <laughs> and knowing that he didn't use Photoshop. Mm -mm. So uh, uh, I decided to, uh, to try so to do something like that, and and yeah, it's it's. Is it they take a lot of time and mm -hmm. to get the uh, negatives uh, right and uh, working with the paper, going from enlarger to enlarger and and I'm grateful from uh, for uh, Kevin for letting me do this at MPC because it it it, it takes quite a, a space to do that. occupying two enlargers yeah. and you're going back and forth, develop, do it yeah. again. <laughs> Back you develop, do it again. So, have you just is that your first darkroom composite, or have you got more since then? Uh, since then, I haven't done any uh, more, but uh, I did uh, for my Western for the uh, 2012 uh, Western that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I did like 12 images like that. Mm -hmm. Wow, cool. Uh, Okay, well now, uh, let's see some of uh, Eduardo's uh, photography. I'm not joking this time, it really will be his. <laughs> uh, as well as a slideshow of my work. Now, I've been shooting digital since about 2004, um, so all the photographs you're gonna see are uh, of my earlier gelatin silver days. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Welcome back, to, welcome back to West Coast Focus and our discussion of the Weston Scholarship winners, and we have three on our panel today. Eddie, who yeah. are your models? And when you're doing these portraits, mm -hmm. are you doing the portraits for them or for yourself? Um, are the photos more about them or more of a, a reflection of something inside you? Um, some of the models are actually classmates from or in other classes at uh, MPC mm -hmm. that were doing beginning uh, photography in the darkroom. So I actually recruited it from there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a normal thing to ask someone that's in the dark room if they can model for you, because they're doing the same thing. They're photog doing photography mm -hmm. as well. And um, me photographing the models, I kind of wanted to do that body of work because I have, my family is all girls, mostly, besides my father. It's, so I come from a women um, background, so you could say. Um, I wanted to do that to show the beauty of the, you know, of, of the ladies and, and, and women and the, the strongness of the face and see how close I can get in the camera lens. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I went with that. And just to get out of my comfort zone of um, being so far away mm -hmm. with the camera, I mm -hmm. wanted to actually sit them down and, and, and use lighting as well. So I'm, I'm learning. Every day I'm learning, so that's kind of where I was at with that. Yeah, your lighting's very dramatic, and you're so close you can almost see a reflection in their eyes. Yeah, I was uh, using a, a macro lens, so I really got into it. And that, so it's yeah. just, and, and doing that, you get, you know, the connection of really working mm -hmm. with and another I, person. And well. I think the photos, the way that you portray these women, it, it, you do portray strength. That's what I was trying to go for, yeah. because my sisters and my mom and they're very strong women, and I believe the women, you know, they hold a lot of strength. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Lane, um, you do a lot of work with models, as well as you do a lot of modeling for yourself. <laughs> a lot of the photos we saw on the slideshow, those iconic Hollywood images, those are actually you. Mm -hmm. What are you more comfortable? Do you like modeling for yourself, or, or do you like to recruit models? Well, um, you know, since I'm just starting out with photography, it has been, I guess, more comfortable for me to do myself, um, just because, you know, I, um, it's just easier for me to kind of visualize it in my head, um, you know, how exactly I want it to look and then do that my, on my own mm -hmm. rather than having to kind of direct a model, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, although I do want to become more um, proficient at directing, so I'm definitely going to be working with um, other models in the future. but. Um, it, it was a bit easier to start out with doing self-portraits. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit self-conscious working with models, so I, <laughs> I like to model for myself mm -hmm. as a first choice when I can, and I like to do um, uh, imagery inspired by the Star Wars universe, so I get dressed oh. up in the Star <laughs> Wars stuff, and I'll be out at like uh, the, the coves at Pacific Grove at Point Pinos, and people will be gathering around, and they're all taking pictures <laughs> of me, and I've got, <laughs> I've got the camera on a timer, but it's hard to see my exact pose. So I'm, right. I'll usually take like 20 shots subtly adjusting my pose so I have the one to pick that, uh, that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Eduardo, uh, models for you? Are you sticking to the landscape? Do you like uh. to shoot people? Not that often. Like uh, I really uh, would like to get into uh, nudes, and uh, uh, but still, I'm like, I, as you can see, I'm not, I'm not a big, uh, I don't get it really along with people. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that I w that's something that I would I would really love to do, mm -hmm. to get into nudes, and uh, there's. Uh, a painter, but uh, his name is uh, Scott. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he works in uh, Carmel. Mm -hmm. uh, he was my neighbor for like a year, and I really uh, love his work, and I'm getting inspired by what he's doing so far. Mm. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, what's so great about living in such a rich photography community is the diversity of styles and vision and technique. And to illustrate that, I've got a slideshow here of many past Weston Scholarship winners. Enjoy the ride.
And now it's time for reflections in the developer tray. This is the segment where I like to leave you with a little something to think about before our next show on September 8th. It's unfortunate that our society has reached a point that if an academic program cannot be measured by a standardized test, it loses its funding. Arts education offers students intangible benefits about how to live, survive, and enjoy life. The only way to measure their success is by witnessing it through each individual as they succeed over the span of their life. This interview with Weston Scholarship winner Annabelle Scott I think drives that point home. And you get to see some more great photos. <laughs> this scholarship and this family and this community have changed my life. Um, I think most notably it was being able to take what had been dark and ugly and unpleasant and painful and turn it into something beautiful and turn it into something that I put on a map board and was able to see in a gallery and be recognized for it positively. Without the encouragement, especially of Holly Letterly at Carmel High, I, for all intents and purposes, I owe her my life. I, I don't know where I'd be without this art. I don't know where I'd be without this medium and um, you know just the experience of this scholarship gives young artists such a huge boost of confidence and such recognition. It really sets the tone for what will become an artistic career and no matter how you place or you know how young you are how old you are you enter this competition and you feel like you're a part of something and you feel like you have just become a part of a family and become a part of a community of people who want to encourage you and see you grow as an artist and I think that that is something that this scholarship really tries to promote is the development of your art, the development of your voice as an artist and um, I'm forever indebted to it. Welcome back to West Coast Focus, and I have another statement to read from one of our local photography teachers, Cole Thompson at Stevenson, and he says, I was fortunate enough to know the Westons when the scholarship program started 11 years ago, so I encouraged my students to invest their efforts in taking a shot at the competition. In retrospect, we set the standard of how not to do it when finishing our prints for submission. In spite of our misguidance, we won a couple of scholarships. Since then, we have learned a lot from Kim and Gina and contributed a few ideas to the expanding format of the Weston Scholarship. We strive for more than a grade or a compliment on their work, and as a consequence, achieved rewards that students can truly consider well-deserved on a grander scale. That's what I'm talking about in arts education. 
Okay, so we all have a lot to th be thankful for in our photography yeah. world. Eddie, what are you thankful for? Um, I want to. I'm thankful for the image makers, my teachers, uh, family, friends, and uh, everyone that's pushing photography in the film analog style. Eduardo. Teachers, the westerns, my family, even Mike's, uh, all the community that still do uh, uh, that push uh, wet. Uh, black and white photography here in this area. Mm -hmm. Late Lane, what are you grateful for? Um, definitely my um, first photography teacher I've had at MPC, Greg Mettler. He is mm. just such a phenomenal teacher. He genuinely cared so much about each of his students and helping them to grow in their work. I definitely wouldn't have grown as much as I did without him. So. Yeah, I'm just thankful for this whole community. I'm thankful for you guys coming on this show and the photography you submitted to, cool. to show everybody. It's been great. Remember to get and post all your photo event and activities information at Monterey Peninsula Photo Events. That's mpenphotoevents.blogspot.com. That's our program. Thank you, Lane, Eduardo, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Gina and Kim Weston and Annabelle Scott for sharing their stories. Thanks for Bill Speck for his original music. Thanks for Mar Michael Martins uh, in directing the show from the control room. And of course, a big thank you to our sponsor, Myrick Photographic, and the additional financial support from Terry Lebda Administrative Services in Marina. Tune in September 8th when we'll be pushing the wet darkroom with guests Martha Cassinave, we heard some, her name mentioned a few times today, Jane Olin and Robin Robinson with a printing demo by Zach Weston straight from the Wildcat Hill darkroom. You can view past episodes of West Coast Focus at stevesmack.com, West Coast Focus TV, and of course you have my guarantee that you will see at least 100 photos per episode. We're in the 150 neighborhood today. May your futures be zone 10 bright and your darkroom chemistry not too intoxicating. Thanks for focusing on the West Coast. Now get off the couch and make a print.